exactly 69 days ago, probably one of the most hyped VR games of all time, Bone Lab had finally launched, breaking the all-time record for the fastest selling VR game of all time on Quest. But that's not where our story ends. Turns out that Bone Lab has also turned into probably one of the most divisive VR games of all time, with one crowd claiming that this is the future of VR and others fueling probably one of the biggest hate trains that I've ever seen for a VR game, something that we'll definitely get into. So. Oh, 69 days later. I think it's time we really look at Bone Lab retrospectively, take off the rosy tinted glasses, and take a look at the community's reaction to the game, where the mods have gone since launch, the latest string of updates, and answer a simple question. Was Bone Lab grossly overhyped? Because I think even my own thoughts have evolved quite a bit since launch. So I want to talk about the original hype for Bone Lab for just a moment because I think it's a really important piece of context to the entire situation. Bone Lab is essentially Stress Level Zero's fourth VR game, from Hover Junkers way back to Duck Season, then of course Bone Works in 2019. And Bone Works itself is a pretty interesting title, the reception almost as divisive as Bone Lab, but of course to a much smaller audience since the game was launched on PC VR only. However, the game still garnered quite a sizable following because Boneworks just felt so different than anything else out there. It's entirely physics-based, you got a full body rather than floating hands, you can play as fast as you want or as literally slow as you want. And as any Boneworks or Bone Lab fan can agree to, once you get good at the game, it feels really rewarding to use that physics, and it's turned into without a doubt my favorite VR game yet. Boneworks is legit up there on my brain shelf of favorite games right next to Halo 3 and Final Fantasy 7, and it made me fall in love with VR games all over again, which is pretty special. However, of course it had its drawbacks. The campaign was disjointed, the physics systems can at times feel janky, and of course it was PC only, so the majority of VR users couldn't even play it. So when Stress Level Zero announced their fourth game, Bone Lab, essentially a Boneworks 2 but for Quest and PC, and with official mod support, I think a lot of people, including myself, got really, really excited. The hope that maybe Bone Lab will take the physics systems of Boneworks but make it better and bring it to millions more people and improve on the storyline with grander set pieces, with dedicated mod support, it all sounds like a dream come true, but Looking back, things ended up just a little less than ideal. And I can basically answer the question now, was Bone Lab overhyped? And the short answer is yes, but the long answer is sorta not really depending on what you're looking for. But I want to dive pretty deep into it. So first, I want to talk about the campaign. There are only a few games ever that I've played a campaign of more than once, let alone like 10 times. But I did just that for Boneworks, and every single time, I really enjoyed it. And and at least for the first few playthroughs before you learn all the tricks, Boneworks campaign can last a solid 8, maybe even 9 hours, which is part of the reason why I was so excited for Bone Lab's campaign. And on my first playthrough of Bone Lab, I really did enjoy it. It felt more straightforward than Boneworks and it was fun, it took me around 7.5 hours or so to complete. It wasn't the best and I was hoping for more, but I was more or less somewhat satisfied. But it just really hasn't held up for me the same way the past couple months, the way that Boneworks did over three years. I don't really look back fondly on it, and I couldn't really figure out why, so I replayed the entire campaign over again for just this video, and I think after delving into it deeper, I now know exactly why. And I think the first flag is that while my very first playthrough lasted more than seven and a half hours, just playing normally through Bone Lab this time, I blew through the campaign in under two hours. And don't get me wrong here, there are some really good parts. The first few and last few missions of Bone Lab feel great. It's like the Boneworks 2 that we all imagined. It's just what's crammed in the middle that throws the entire game off track, and it starts with the hub. You get this crazy cool buildup like you're about to set up on this mysterious epic journey, then you just get thrown into a hub to complete mini games for the next hour, and it completely kills the pace. And honestly, I thought it was just me being dumb the first time, but to my surprise, I wasn't the only one that got to the hub and had no clue what to do next. I just ran around climbing everything looking for clues. And in retrospect, this was a pretty terrible way to introduce the story. And while it does get back on track with Minecart, I actually really like that level, this is not my only qualm. 
New to Bone Lab is a mechanic that allows you to swap avatars with specs to match the avatar's characteristics, which is awesome. It's probably one of the coolest parts of the game, and I wish more games had something like this. But it was executed so poorly story and pacing-wise. Essentially, once again, as soon as the game's story is picking up, you are forced to play through a sequence of mini-games just to unlock each avatar. And that's not saying it's all bad. Street Puncher, the first of these levels, is probably one of my favorite bone levels ever. It's fun, fast, the music hits. But this section of the game also holds two of the worst levels Stress Level Zero has ever made by popular vote. Moon Base, where you just have no clue where to go, and the incredibly frustrating Pillar Climb. And then after all of this, when you finally get all the avatars, when you've slogged past playing two sets of mini games for the storyline, when it feels like the game is just starting, the game ends. And yes, the last couple of levels are fun, and yeah, technically, if you took your time, the campaign can last 7 or 8 hours the first time. But more than half of that 8 hours is spent playing minigames and getting lost on Moonbase. And when you remove the mysterious getting lost part of the game, the playtime and discovery and pacing just evaporates. And this time, the gameplay just doesn't make up for the lack of direct storyline and storytelling and all the breaks in pacing. And I think for the first playthrough, it's still really fun, but after you go through the gimmick of not knowing what to do, well, there's not really a challenge. And now, looking back, if you were buying Bone Lab for just the campaign, as a lot of people did, I can totally understand why this game has gotten so much backlash, especially from people that loved Boneworks and its campaign. Gameplay-wise, it is an improvement, and the missions themselves leaning on that gameplay are a lot of fun, but story and pacing-wise, what felt like a step forward at first is closer to a step back or maybe just standing still. And I I'm sure that a lot of this has to do with time crunch and having to optimize everything for the Quest 2. You just can't do what you're capable of on a PC with a two-year-old phone processor, but that still doesn't change the fact that the campaign does suffer. Did I enjoy it? Yeah, of course, and I stand by that. But do I still enjoy it two months later, replaying it post-launch hype for the fourth time? Uh, yeah, but its flaws are a lot more apparent, and I'm left a little sad that every time the game's pace picks up, it's dropped, and then just as soon as the game feels like it's coming together with all the avatars and the set pieces, it's just over. But of course, the other biggest criticism I've seen a lot regarding Bone Lab happens to be its other huge selling point, mods. And I can definitely admit that I let mods as a feature and the kind of open-ended possibility of it overshadow my thoughts on the campaign originally, because at the end of the day, the campaign was just a setup for mod support, like that's literally what the lore was. So all that being said, how have the mods held up? Do they carry Bone Lab? Do they do what we all hoped and make the game into essentially a Gary's Mod of VR? And well, that's a weird one. I tried out just about every top downloaded mod available for both PC and Quest. And while there are a lot of really cool things to check out, and there's hours and hours of free content to be enjoyed, I mean, it's pretty freaking fun to drive a warthog as Master Chief on Rainbow Road running over null bodies, and it's finally happened to some extent at least. Someone has modded two levels of Boneworks into Bone Lab, and you can play them on Quest for free. I mean, that's nuts. Yeah, the frame rate chugs sometimes and the visuals suffer harshly, but the fact that this works at all is insane. But I'm also just gonna be real. The mod tools in SDK are still pretty darn limited right now. Way more limited than I thought they were going to be. The furthest you can go without getting really technical is modding weapons, avatars, maps, and vehicles. And frankly, most of those things already existed as mods for Boneworks. It was just significantly harder to do before. So really, all we've gotten so far is an easier way to add and make mods, which is awesome, don't get me wrong, and having mods on the quest is even cooler, but it's just not quite at the level of what I and I think a lot of others were hoping for. And by this point, it may sound like I now think Bone Lab was a disappointment in retrospect, but that's not quite it at all. The real problem here is that Bone Lab launched with the pedestal of Boneworks behind it, and with a campaign that doesn't hold up as well, especially a few months later to its predecessor. And the mod tools it did launch with don't quite make up for that fact at least not yet. And on top of that, I can't ignore this, the PC version of the game had quite a few issues for a lot of users, from performance to knuckles not working properly to weird bugs popping up, but 
things are looking a lot better. Stress Level Zero are working on making all of this better, and this is where some of the excitement does come back in. So let's talk about the updates. Because if they're anything to go off of, I think SLZ has acknowledged that some of the game needs some pretty serious work, and we're now starting to see that. To start, a lot of the PC-related issues have been fixed or improved upon, and while it's still not a total redo, things are getting better. Performance has been increased, the physics are constantly improving with updates, making rifles and guns feel better, more controllers are now supported, and index support is fixed as well, new avatars and guns have been added, and most importantly, almost every single level has gotten tweaks of some sort, and there's even been a total rework. Like, Sprint Bridge's entire level pacing was improved and redone completely. On top of that, new secret areas are available on every map now. What I'm trying to say is that the game is getting better and it is receiving updates. It's been two months and that's quite a bit to add. But still, I think the most important updates are yet to come. Right now, the mod SDK is still in pretty early stages. Basically, just avatars, simple levels, guns, and spawnables. But this is due to change as this was only the first few revisions of the SDK, and it has been stated quite a few times that we're going to get a lot more in the future. And I know that the end goal is for people to be able to make full games within Bone Lab using Marrow, but we're just not there yet. We may get there in a few months, maybe in a year, maybe never. But I think from this whole super hype experience, the VR community has learned a lot, and I know I certainly have, so I think it's time to address that elephant in the room. Boneworks is still my favorite VR game, and I do still really enjoy Bone Lab a lot. I even make mods for it every now and then. And I do still really believe in the game. The SDK will continue getting updates, hopefully the campaign's reworks continue to make a better experience, or maybe it's even expanded. And I still really do believe that physics-based games like Bone Lab and the interactions that are made possible because of Mero the underlying interaction engine developed by the studio, are the future of immersive VR games. When I said Bone Lab will change VR forever, I meant it and I stand by it. Believe me, other studios are looking at Bone Lab and Stress Level Zero selling a million dollars on the Quest Store in an hour, and they're taking notes. This game is going to have much longer and deeper impacts than just the typical VR game. And in terms of that idea, I don't think Mero was overhyped at all. The interactions function exactly like I'd hoped and talked about, plus the fact that Bone Lab and Boneworks levels within Bone Lab run on Quest 2 at all is insane. But I also want to be honest, in terms of Bone Lab itself, it's pretty much community consensus that it was a little overhyped. And my videos certainly helped fuel that. It was never my intention to overhype anything. From my point of view, it just feels like everyone's just as excited about a game as I am. Which further makes everyone even more hyped. It's like a snowball. Plus, mix that with very few VR games having been released in the past year in general, and you've got a perfect storm for an overhyped game that disappoints people when it isn't objectively the best thing to have ever been made. And looking retrospectively post Bone Lab launch, yes, it was overhyped. Yes, it has its issues, and it is not perfect. The campaign and story doesn't quite hold up as well as I hoped like its last game did. But looking at recent updates and looking at the current roadmap, it's looking like there's going to be a lot more in the future, and I'm really hoping that that comes true. But there's two things that I really know from this experience. One, I'm going to be a lot more careful about hyping stuff up. Even if I'm super excited, I'm probably going to tamper it down just a little bit. Two, I'm also sticking to my guns. I still love the game, and I would still review it positively 100%, but not without more caveats than I had originally stated. And I think that's pretty fair. Plus, we can't really expect a better game from Stress Level Zero if we don't give honest feedback. So, here's mine. But what about you? 69 days later, post hype, post launch, what do you think? Overhyped or did Bone Lab meet your expectations? And I really hope that you enjoyed my little Bone Lab retrospective. I felt like it was hyper necessary given the community's response to Bone Lab as well as my own videos on the game. Believe me, I'm listening to all the feedback and I'm just trying my absolute best out here. And I'm learning all the time how to do this YouTube thing better and better. But for now, I wanted to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. But until next time, don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love. Goodbye.